Hi, my name is Tony Santo and I'm a large format photographer. This video is all about my adventure to Monument Valley. Please stay tuned to come along for a ride. Monument Valley Navajo Tribal Park includes roughly 92,000 acres of vast desert basin with scattered majestic mesas and buttes protruding into wide open skies. It is without a doubt one of the most intensely colorful landscapes I have been to in the deserts of the American Southwest. These lands are not only filled with ethereal beauty, but they are sacred, culturally significant, and a protected home for the Navajo. Each time I have visited, a profound sense of spirituality transcends what I typically experience in other preserved landscapes. The drive to Monument Valley from Las Vegas is a long one. Approximately eight hours of captivating landscape that varies in color, texture, and form that make the journey figuratively short. Much of the drive is rural highway, which makes for a more intimate and spiritual experience. The local townships along the way have a wonderful feel of what travel might have been like in decades long forgotten. It is a journey filled with cultural richness, historical significance, and of course, culinary delights. So I finally made it out to Monument Valley. It took me about eight hours to get out here, which is pretty good. I stopped for lunch in Page, Arizona at Fiesta Mexicana. Had a nice vegetable burrito there, it was awesome. Then I finally meandered over and got to Monument Valley. The whole way out here though, I've been kind of concerned because it's been windy. My car has been drifting uh, across the road. When I got out here to Monument Valley, uh, the wind has not let up. In fact, it's kind of blustery. So you've got these huge gusts of wind that are just coming out of nowhere. And the forecast says they're up to about 30 miles an hour or so. So that is not good weather for large format photography. The camera basically is going to be this huge wind sail and cause major vibrations and blurs in the image. At the VIEW campground here, they have awesome campsites because each campsite is placed such that you're going to get an unobstructed view of Monument Valley. So it's not like one campsite on top of another. It's along the, the, the edge of the hill back behind me here. So what I've done is actually I've set up my tent and the tent I have has a vestibule and I've put my 8x10 camera set up right in that vestibule and that seems to be working to dissipate and mitigate some of the wind problem. I don't see the bellows or the camera shaking at all so I think I can pull off the shot that I'm looking for. So my goal, and I've only got two sunsets to do it, so tonight and tomorrow night, is to basically get the shadow of the West Mitten Butte, which is the butte that you see in the foreground behind me. Uh, that shadow gets cast perfectly at this time of year on top of the East Mitten Butte, which is the butte that's in the background there. So it only happens twice a year, and around this time of year, September 12th, September 13th, is where the peak of that is supposed to happen. So hopefully I can nail this shot uh, without any trouble from the wind. The sunset was, it was pretty nice. I got to see the shadow from the West Mitten casting on uh, the East Mitten. So it was pretty good. And the wind had died down a little bit, so it wasn't too bad. But the only problem is, and it's really frustrating, is that I had mechanical failure of my shutter. And large format camera lenses, the shutter lenses, or the shutter part of it, excuse me, 
are notorious for sticking with the slower speed. So like a quarter of a second, half a second, one second. Uh, over time, the oils inside there kind of gum up and really make those shutter speeds not work properly. And although I've tested my lenses previous to this, um, it just <laughs> it had a slow shutter speed and it, it just didn't fire correctly. And I noticed that the shutter was actually still open and I heard it shut when I was monkeying around with something in my bag and I was like, uh-oh, that shutter is, um, is too slow. So I don't think I'm going to have anything for sunset from Monday evening, uh, which is okay. I mean, that happens. As you might have imagined, my first image was completely overexposed to the point where the mittens were barely visible on the slide film. Knowing that the shutter had failed, I swapped my 360mm lens for my 300mm lens and captured what I was after. With one little exception. In my haste to capture the image, I neglected to refocus the camera after I swapped lenses. So the log in the foreground is nicely in focus, but the remainder of the image is not. Maybe, just maybe, it might work as an abstract image. Not to worry though, there was one more opportunity on this trip. For sunrise on Tuesday morning, there really weren't too many clouds in the sky, so it wasn't dramatic. Um, it was a pretty simple, straightforward uh, sunrise, so I didn't expose any uh, sheet film there. I did a couple of digital shots, that's about it. And then, after sunrise, I decided to head out to uh, Valley of the Gods, which is nearby, which is a really cool place. And that was around 10, 30, 11 o'clock or so uh, that I made it down there. And the clouds just kept on rolling in and rolling in. And it was looking better and better, especially for black and white photography. I found this great dead tree behind me here that should fit very nicely with all of the sandstone structures behind it as far as uh, structures lined up in a row. So I'm hoping that composition will work nicely. For a black and white shot, there are some wonderful clouds in the sky with a red filter that'll make those clouds really pop. So hopefully this turns out nice. We'll just have to wait and see. Then as I made my way out of Valley of the Gods, I went over to Mexican Hat and the Mexican Hat rock formation. And again, the clouds are, were just perfect for black and white photography yesterday. I mean, you couldn't ask for any better uh, clouds. And so uh, I found uh, some rock formations in the foreground and some brush that kind of uh, went nicely along with the Mexican hat rock formation with some dramatic clouds. So hopefully that also uh, turns out pretty nicely. And then I came back to Monument Valley and did the scenic drive.
had stopped over at the north window for another black and white image that I had uh, in mind that I was hoping were uh, some great clouds to be in the sky and, and it turned out there were however the frustrating part of that is that it was so blustery I mean these wind gusts were probably around 30 miles an hour or so it was just shaking the car so I'm not sure what I'm going to get out of this shot but I did end up popping up the uh, rear hatch on the SUV and kind of tucking the camera about halfway in and uh, waiting for just that right moment to do an exposure and I was shooting at f45 but the shutter speed was 1 15th of a second so hopefully that was fast enough that that split second that the wind died down just enough so I can click the shutter and capture the image without any uh, image blur. So we'll see if that turns out. If it does turn out, um, I think it'll be a pretty good image because the clouds were just absolutely amazing in the background. started to uh, get a little bit cloudier and really thick and we had thunderstorms and the wind gusts were out of control. They were just blowing in all directions and, and, and very, very fast. So uh, it wasn't looking great for large format photography. So because of that, I decided to go back to my tent and set up again in the vestibule to shield myself from the winds. And it's a good thing I did because those winds persisted uh, pretty consistently throughout sunset. Now sunset was interesting because there were thunderstorms around us. It was raining at some points. Uh, the winds were kicking up. Um, back behind me where the sun uh, was setting, um, there was a break in the clouds which I thought, wow, this, this could be a pretty uh, magical sunset. And sure enough, there were a few moments. It was a split second where uh, a rainbow appeared and then finally the uh, sun poked through and cast a shadow of the west mitten on the east mitten and it was pretty dramatic and there was very very little time uh, to, uh, to capture that shadow just because of all the cloud cover so the only problem is again after even after swapping out my shutters between my 300 millimeter uh, lens and my 360 uh, lens I think I may have had mechanical failure on that shutter as well so I'm not sure that I uh, accomplished my goal of getting the West Mitten shadow casting on the East Mitten uh, rock formation. So we'll just have to wait and see. Um, but I'm really not optimistic about any of the color photography uh, that I did on this trip as far as 8x10 Velvia 50 is concerned. The lighting in this scene pushed the five stop latitude of Fujifilm Velvia and I tried to strike a balance between a slightly darker and a slightly lighter image. So I took two exposures under rapidly changing lighting conditions. Even after all these years of shooting slide film, I am still amazed that these images turned out relatively well given the dramatic weather conditions. Uh, this morning sunrise was, it, it was okay. Um, the, there weren't many clouds in the sky so I decided to go for uh, silhouette. There were some clouds down low off in the distance that kind of brought out some colors in the sky so uh, hopefully what I'll get out of that image is a silhouette of the mittens with some nice gradations in color from uh, yellow to uh, a nice deep blue up high in the sky. So we'll just have to wait and see and see what I get. Just a short while later, I took a second image with the sun directly behind the East Mitten Butte. Monument Valley was a location I had always wanted to visit and finally did so with my wife for the first time in 2009. 
Over the years, each time I've made this sojourn, I've been blessed to capture images that express the emotional connection I have with these lands. Despite the mechanical failure of my shutters and challenging weather conditions, this trip was equally rewarding both spiritually and photographically. As always, thanks for watching.